Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circle coverage here on RHAP. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I have a circle of uh, co-hosts, circle of guests, people to talk about the circle with as I circle around in my chair. Uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and with me to talk about the circle this season, Mike Bloom. How you doing, Mike? Ah, uh, Taryn, we got the bro code going down. Or we could call ourselves the circle jerks if we really want to. Now that we're I'm a little a uncomfortable with the misogynistic tone of this conversation, but I'm willing to pretend uh, to make things a little smoother. So, Guys, I think Taryn's AI. Oh. <laughs> Chill. Show me a picture of yourself roller skating, Taryn. Is it a stock <laughs> photo? I've got, hey, I've got scars from roller skating. All right. Uh, this fell that fell so easily off the tongue that tells me I believe you 100. percent Yes. Uh, well, also joining us, he's not AI, but he is Puya. How you doing, Puya? I'm doing good. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I feel like you know, throughout the years, one of the loudest echoes in reality TV has been the Circle was great. Circle UK was undefeated. Circle Netflix has fallen off. I'm here to say I don't I feel good about this. I feel optimistic about what we've seen so far. So I'm excited to talk about it. Can we call you young young Puya Fuego? Can that be your nickname for this particular set of podcasts? Hey, if you know me well and you do, you get the pass. You can call me that, Mike. All right, fantastic. That'll be our right. our our own little side nickname. Just don't <laughs> reveal to Taryn that we are number one allies, please. <laughs> yeah, no. It, listen, this is a huge upgrade from the nickname Taryn gave me on the BB Can recap this week. So we'll take That's it. What I was thinking. Listen, I I can't take full credit. That was uh, Mary really kicked that ball. <laughs> well, you got the nickname, and then you just <laughs> gave it to me. So it's been better on you. What can I say? Cursed by the letter P. What can I say? <laughs> Uh, I agree for you. I think um, I was into this. I, mm -hmm. I was really, I, I really liked the, these first four episodes of the circle. I think for me, it's it's a few reasons. Uh, one, we had a nice break from the circle. They we were got a, we really got a chonky break. They were churning out these seasons like every few like months, twice a year, something. right? Yeah, yeah. So we between had one. between that and the UK version, it was just it was a lot. We had one in 2020, of course. That was the big breakout season. Two in 2021. Technically two in 2022, though the first drop of season five happened on December 28th into early 2023. And it's been a minute. It's been over a year. And now we have a new season. Necessary break, I think. Yeah. Especially because the formula was feeling pretty stale. Um, and so that, that helps. I think another thing that helped me in these four episodes is that, uh, w you know, we'll talk about that cliffhanger at the end. But one thing I liked is that they didn't get rid of anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. in, oh. in the, I would have wanted them to finish somebody off in the fourth episode. Mm -hmm. But I liked that I got to know these people over four episodes. Uh, instead of losing someone immediately that I didn't even know or care about, I felt like I was learning who these people were, learning uh, what the relationships were. I really liked that. Um, number three. The AI. I I like Max. I'm into it. I think it's a fun and unique concept. This is a weird show with a weird premise, and they should be doing weird things. Um, so I think that's good. Uh, and and then for me, like the final thing was uh, it, the the first thing that really set me off for this uh, season was that question game they did, uh, which reminded me instantly of season one of the UK. Yeah, they did something similar, like like current day controversial-esque topic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get a sense of who these people are. Um, and like, it really brought me back to, to why this show exists in the first place and the kinds of things they can do with it. So yeah, I, I was really into these four episodes. Make it three for three. I mean, I almost always enjoy a first week of The Circle because The Circle US, especially the past few seasons, they've tried to throw like some gimmick in in the first yeah. batch to have people tune in. We had the whole incredibly frustrating example of real Michelle and fake Michelle. And then we had the Spice Girls catfishing thing. Uh, last season, we had sort of like the whole uh, immediate blocking on night one to Brett and Xanthi, then uh, catfishing as somebody else, and then Shuby sewing up. So I love bringing in Max here for a number of reasons. To Taryn's point, it feels like a necessary kind of like progression as much as people were kind of hoping this was a thing since the beginning. 
the fact that AI has accelerated even so much between last season and this, it really is, of course, a hot topic of conversation. We are, of course, talking of a net on a network of a guy who loves the hell out of chat GPT and uses it for so mm -hmm. many prompts. And listen, we'll talk about the validity of, oh, we're hands off. Max is on his own. We'll see what happens. He can step in it if he wants to. But I think it's just such a fun experience. And honestly, might be this like low key undercover mirror that we're holding off to society of, okay, what does make us human? Maybe it's just because I've been watching so much Battlestar Galactica as of late, but looking at, you know, uh, how, how simulated can human behavior be? And to see people respond to the fact that one of them can be an AI and see how they take such different measured responses for it. It's, it's really like a fantastic social strategy game because it essentially became mafia, right? It became what among you is a traitor. You've got to mm -hmm. find them. And then you have everyone. And I wouldn't say that the action up to that point wasn't like stagnant, but it really did, I think, bring this very fun pointed momentum for the latter two episodes of okay, now everyone is sniffing out who this confirmed AI is. Yeah, I feel like, because I was of two minds when they end up having the ending, the cliffhanger of episode two be, by the way, not all of you are human. There is an AI. I was trying to decide how I felt about it because part of me was like, I actually wish they didn't know because the reveal would have been way better. But on the other hand, I feel like typically everyone's so into who's catfish no one was talking about catfish anymore for like two episodes. It's all about who is fake, who is the AI. So I like that. I also think that this was a very smart decision on Netflix's side for casting an AI into the cast because I think any celebrity you threw in here after a year hiatus, no one cares. They're like, oh, they're on this show. I'm probably not going to watch it. Maybe I'll check it, whatever. But I've seen a lot of excitement about the prospect of AI playing. And I think, you know, to your point of holding up a mirror to society, this is a reality we live in now. In the last mm -hmm. year alone, AI capabilities have not only come in, they've taken over. People are making songs using AI. So many, you can generate clips for your social media through AI. Like AI can has been taking a lot of social media work. So I'm very curious to see how it plays out. I also agree where I don't think the AI just fully does everything on its own. I 100% think there's one, like, at the very least, there's an enter button that a, that a PA has to hit because you don't know what the AI is going to say. If it says some out-of-pocket stuff, you're going to be like, okay, try it again, but nicer. Then we press enter. Yeah, uh, I, 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 was, I was actually pretty annoyed when they revealed that there mm -hmm. was an AI um, because my, my, and my thought process on that is you can only do this once. Um, you can only really catch them off guard once every future season of the circle. People are going to be wondering, is there an AI in here right. somewhere? It's, it's the knowledge is power of the circle, right? Where Jeff Probst has infamously said, we don't need to bring it back anymore because now everyone assumes that might be in play. And that brings enough paranoia in and of itself. Yeah. And I felt like, and I still do, that I, I wanted there to be more time to see how, like what it would be like to just watch an AI exist among humans who didn't realize that an AI would was there. Mm. Um and and I still do wish that. That said, I do I I do think that like the knowledge of the AI and the paranoia that brought and the hunt for the AI changed the game in an interesting way that I do like. Um yeah. mm -hmm. so so I agree that, uh, that there there are two minds there. Um and and I and I think that like there is a danger that if you wait too long, uh Max just gets blocked, uh, then you get none of that, right? And it's probably where they were, what they're, what they were thinking with that. Yeah. Um, so I get it. I get it, but I am still, there's still a part of me that's like, man, wouldn't it have been fun to, to see more of just like what it's like to see an AI interact with humans that don't realize that there's an AI talking? I agree. I mean, there is part of me that speaks from my heart that's like, I would just feel terrible for these people. And look, for reality TV fans, there is almost always the schadenfreude s dynamic of pointing and laughing at the fact that Lauren consistently says, basically, oh, I can count the strands of DNA that exist in his totally real fleshy, oozy body because he's definitely a human and not an AI. But I would feel bad for them that like, this is something that they could not predict whatsoever. I think what's also interesting about it from a meta perspective is to see how this almost fast tracks catfish hunting as well. Cause we'll talk about like 
if this max thing lasts the entire season, I do not think it does. We'll get into that, maybe comparing it with some of the other gimmicks. But you look at someone like Caress, aka Paul, has drawn a lot of eyes to her. And it, they're not exactly off the trail, right? Like the things they're saying about Caress, like, oh, the things you're saying is a little too polished. The photos you're using is used in this way to say, and therefore you're an AI. But it's not too dissimilar from, and therefore your profile's fake and you're a catfish. Now, look, I think I could speak on behalf of all three of us when we really say, so what about catfish on the circle? If someone trusts you, it doesn't matter what profile pic or name they're using. All that matters is that you have their loyalty, but it's always going to be a big deal to these contestants. And so it'll be interesting to see even if and when Max departs, how much have some of these other contestants kind of been opened up for so much scrutiny based on what's just happened? Well, that's what I like about the AI component. It's that like, the, for a long time, we've been talking about how who cares about the catfish. Hmm. You do care about the AI, like not just not just because of like the, the the angle of being lied to or whatever, but like you know, like as a human, as humans, we are not ready to admit that we can be fooled by AI, right? Like we still hmm. want that dominion uh, of ours to be to be to be human owned and and operated, you know. <laughs> And on top of that, like, I'm assuming, you know, an AI isn't going to be loyal to you. Like, the AI is probably not going to be in the game forever. Like, being aligned with the AI is probably an actual disadvantage. And so determining whether or not your allies are AI is actually important, as opposed to the catfish angle, where, like, you just have a loyal number. Who cares if they're a catfish? If they're an AI, that could actually be bad for you. Um, and so it gives you an actual incentive to care about this uh, that is both game oriented and human oriented. Uh, and I think that's really fun. And I think that's part of what added to these four episodes. Yeah, I think also the addition of AI and their focus on having the AI be a star on the show means that the way they casted this season is a lot less showmantic than what the last couple of seasons had felt for me, which was one that's of the bigger flaws. Yeah, like we have flirting going on, but it seems to me very innocent, very surface level and mostly part of the game and not so much part of the I'm ready to go on a date. And, you know, Marvin, yeah. who was supposed to be on BB24, really went that route of this is all about the showmans for me. Which, last was, season. which was great, though. That was honestly the best drama that we've maybe seen in the circle since Savannah and Tara Alicia was like Marvin getting caught to timing. But that's the other thing as well, is that I do feel what's what's great about this particular group is that, A, I mean, with maybe one or two exceptions, it doesn't feel like we're necessarily pulling a brew out there, right? Of like, okay, who's a famous social media personality who's going to try to play but is really a fish out of water? It does seem like even the people that are flirting the most, namely QT and Miles, both have personalities. And from QT's perspective, particularly like a big sense of gamesmanship, that that's not all. There exactly about, which is what i want in my reality tv characters yeah i mean listen there was there was a point in these four episodes i had the thought and i had the feeling i think i think max is my favorite yep 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 is, yep. is that uh, weird because no, i feel like it's weird you're not alone liana same she said number one max on the list easy like, ranking like yeah i i i'm and i'm not kidding i liked max's personality the best <laughs> he was i mean he's anybody. got jokes for days like that he can spit out those one-liners like no other is his gameplay a little fancy fencer tin maybe well, but that was later because at first he was so spot on strategically yeah. he was yeah. like so good at what he was doing in conversations and then the uh, just the fact that it was like oh it's bro code and he was like eh, i kind of feel gross about this but i have to for the game i was like Oh my God! Are you me? Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I was I was into Max. Then he gets wishy washy, and I start questioning his strategic decisions. At which point, I was like, "Okay, you're no longer my favorite." But not because he's an AI, because he started being bad at the game. That's the thing. And is Max not a facsimile of like the super fan experience, where you have watched all these seasons, you have compiled all this information in your head about what to do and when to do it. And then you are thrust into the situation where the rubber is going to really meet the road. And you're like, okay, can I apply this to an actual social game situation? Or is my personality going to win out at the end of the day? 
And Max is maybe leaning in the corner of like, yeah, maybe if you do enough of your homework and you have the statistics as to what percentage of people fart 14 times a day or whatever, you can bank on that and at least make a pretty good first impression. I loved the little factoids that Max would give right before responding to a prompt. I enjoy I enjoy data like that, especially when it's connected to a show that I'm watching. So mm. hearing stuff about percentages, about what the likelihood of your safety is, if the person who's an influencer messages you first, stuff like that, it's intriguing to me. And I, you know, maybe I'm naive, but I'm not buying it as nonsense. I'm buying it as actual data. Um, I'm assuming that this chat, G, this GPT or whatever did its homework and they said it studied all the all the circles. So I, I'm trusting it for now, but I'm enjoying yeah. it. I don't know if it's going to be like that viral bit where someone's like, I put all the Olive Garden commercials into an AI and this is what it produced. <laughs> yeah. We're like, uh huh, sure. I don't think anyone put the closed captions of the first five seasons of the circle into open source AI. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's the thing. There were definitely especially when Max is talking to itself. Uh, mm. I was like, there's no shot like this. No. They, like this was a bit for, that they did. They're doing um, voiceover for it. Yeah, and and so like I, like I I want to know how much of this is is strictly like what the AI is doing. Like the explanations for what it's doing at times again felt like they weren't always what I would expect from an AI. Like the conversations themselves, I can buy um, mm -hmm. for the most part. Uh, but like what goes into the decision making? Because I know that a, a normal player on the circle has to basically apply for conversations uh, and and pitch like, this is why I should be able to talk to this person. Uh, how does it work for the AI? Does it just freely like submit? I want yeah. to talk to this person. How do you like from the producer angle? Like, do you grant it all of its requests? Do you have to like, which ones do you grant? Like it, it gets very murky very quickly. And I would love to have more detail about how it's operating and what it's trained on. See, when you get the, the deep thing. dive at the end of the season, With we'll Max. find all the answers. There yeah. we go. It's almost like a Turing <laughs> test. Like we don't know who's who. Oh, well, like, here's oh the my thing. God. What if they had Max do extant? I was thinking about it. what if Max gets blocked? Are they going to uh, wheel him into the other person's apartment? Like, how does that happen? Yeah. Or just like put him in like a big robot suit to walk his way in there. <laughs> That's the thing, though, is that, again, our general sense of AI, the reason why people make these speculations anyway, is that it's almost always like a generation from a source, right? Mm -hmm. That you go to chat GPT and you say like, write me a, a rap battle about Paul, and then they'll do that. It's not necessarily like ChatGPT is like seeking you out, emailing you, being like, hey, by the way, I wrote this rap battle for you. So my sense would be, and listen, I'm no Miles, so maybe AI truly has advanced to this point where they do have this like independent decision-making that they are pursuing their own actions. Maybe it's something where it's like asking Max, who do you want to chat to today? That's what I was about to say. And then Max is saying, okay, I want to chat to miles because of this or i want to chat to lauren because of this and then it sort of goes from there i know people have also talked about like oh i can't wait for you know people to catch max with bad spelling uh first off listen if you're not thinking that humans have bad spelling that's saying something about you but also, also producers you, type everything for everybody. that's the thing yeah. is that yeah when people are so speaking these messages out loud it is not like a voice to text thing there is somebody off screen who transcribes the message to then send off to the other parties. So any types of errors, grammatical stuff, unless it's purposefully done of like spell cuz with a Z, that stuff is always going to be filtered out in the middleman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, I think, very topical, very interesting twist for the circle. And, and like I said, I think this is what the circle is made for. It's made for stuff like this. Um, and I think that if it's not utilizing these kinds of twists, not using the, its premise to push like boundaries, then it's not it's not performing its function. Yeah, the, ori um, the original concept of the show, right, is like, can you build relationships and win a social strategy game with no face to face interaction? Mm -hmm. And like, this is the ultimate form of it in that you talk about fabricated profiles, fabricated identities. This is a fabricated person. It feels like it was the natural progression to eventually get to. And I'm happy that, listen, six seasons is still a good chunk into its run, but I'm happy we got here better late than never. All right. Well, let's let's talk about some of the cast here apart from uh, from my fave, Max, uh, who's no longer my fave. Uh, <laughs> because... I want to find out who took the top spot, Taryn. <laughs> well, okay. 
Honestly, like right from the get go. Yeah, who's uh, at the top of your ratings? Who's the most mm-hmm. human? I I agreed with the with the players in there. I really like Miles. Uh, he's very <laughs> fun for me. Yeah, I was surprised because again, he calls it himself that he's an f boy, and I think yes. he comes in with like that platinum bron- blonde hair in those photos we get, and you certainly get a perception of him. But he's that secretly smart bro, right? He's an AI engineer, which I'm not sure what the extent of the work that he's done on it uh but to see him also you know do some stupid stuff in that first game with the touchy subjects of that's what that's what made me like him that's the thing yeah it's like it's like okay yes on paper you should not be doing this you should be going with answers that don't say hey i can't reveal a secret or hey i'm gonna cut someone off as soon as they're bad news but if everyone did that then the game wouldn't be fun you need people like miles in there to be so truthful that it immediately catches everybody's eye and it just makes it even better when two episodes later, he's voted the top dog. Well, that's the funny thing for me. When I first got introduced to Miles, I was like, I'm going to hate this guy. I that's He it, yeah. he looks like the villain from You Got Served. I'm still not over <laughs> it. Um, it, I'm not going to like this. More like You and Got then, Servered. I know. The more and more we got to know him, though, the more and more I was like, yeah, you can hang. I'm very, and, and like his interactions with Cutie have been incredible. Um, he's very, very much up there for me. Like, I think he's in my top, five yeah i like i I, he's just he's very chill i like his approach to the game which is very strategic um but but also like it doesn't seem like he's like performing to me uh Mm. a lot which which i think you can easily get to uh in the circle um but like for me the point of the circle is seeing somebody on their own not having to perform So like getting to see somebody just kind of like be themselves, I think is very fun. And yeah, I mean, it's just right away, like his answers to the to those questions. And I again, I really liked those questions. Yeah. Um, Like, would you remain friends with somebody who got canceled is a great question to ask in the current times. Uh, Like it's an it's an interesting question that actually would make you think about it. Um, Would you date someone with an OnlyFans is a. for me, a big red flag generator. <laughs> and I loved that he was the only guy that said yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's that's like, the other thing is, yeah, is this idea of when he got into this position as the most human, I definitely thought, and look, we can certainly speculate because of unfortunate sad cl- cliffhanger that like Steffi's time might still be up. But I like the fact that he's at least not considering like, gotta lock it down with my bros and get her out of here. Go with what they're saying. Again, he might have just been flapping his gums for good TV, but I liked at least from our perspective, he was entertaining these chats from Lauren and Olivia, finding things out that he was formulating his own thoughts about Paul at the same time. Like, this guy does have a head on his shoulders. I also think he strikes that really great balance in reality TV of, like, being energetic and having this vibe to him without feeling too put on because... Let's be completely honest, something that does get old in the circle is watching everyone freak out about alert popping up on the screen for the umpteen time. I'm so sorry, these people are not that good an actor. Miles at least has that happy medium of, all right, like he's got that energy to him, like when he spikes the jean jacket in response to Paul giving him absolutely nothing. But it didn't feel to me like, I'm just doing this like I do in my TikTok videos. Yeah, you know, there's a world where I thought he was going to be our, I'm going to speak about myself in the third person and keep calling myself Young Papi Fuego for the hundredth time. I'm not getting that, so I'm very happy. Maybe I came in with, like, lower expectations that he's knocking it out of the park, but no, he's been very fun. He's weighing out options. I do enjoy that, like Taryn said, he is a strategic guy, which I think is very fun to add to his otherwise wacky personality, and he's a bit of a flirt, so he's Truly has a little bit of everything going on. Now, I guess the question is, and he did not obviously realize this in hindsight, but even if he's going in there, given, again, the way his profile looks, was AI engineer the right profession? Should he have been truthful about his job? <laughs> well, g- given what happened? <laughs> I was going to say, like, he could sort of walk into that one, and you could argue that's probably the reason why he got cast, yeah, which good on I the producers so. for doing it. Mm. But, I mean, listen, we have watched enough of these shows to know how much people pick apart, oh, you're so in, you're a such and such. That means you're a hyper strategist. It hasn't happened so far, but there might be a certain point where, you know, the bloom falls off the rose for Miles and they're like, this guy's an AI engineer. He's got a brain as well as like hanging down with the bros. He might be someone that we need to get rid of. Well, that'd be funny if um, 
if the person they end up blocking, which at this point doesn't feel like it's going to be Max, isn't AI, at what point are they going to be like, what about if it's the AI engineer? What if he's actually AI and that's supposed to throw us off? Because that could definitely happen. I can see a world where that happens. Yeah, it's interesting that, again, maybe to some of Max's questionable reads, Max was like, Miles might get rid of a strong player in order to remove someone from the game. Like, that's the exact opposite thing you want to do. You're being handed this single-handed power to get rid of somebody, and you're like, great, here's, you know, the one golden arrow to kill the dragon. You're like, great, I'm going to shoot the mayor because I really want to be mayor. And it's like, well, no one in the town is going to trust you after that. <laughs> yeah um so yeah i i like miles I, I think he's very fun um but honestly i like a lot of the cast uh yes. th there's a lot of people um obviously somebody that stood out somebody else that stood out to me was uh was brandon mm -hmm. uh who, uh, who brandon's catfish name uh was olivia olivia right um mostly because so brandon to me introduces himself and it is the immediate classic catfish uh just like no personality behind his messages and then he gave me like brandon gave me i maybe the hardest i've ever laughed at the circle when after that first conversation he starts breaking down into tears uh and he's like i'm just i'm really disappointed with myself for how i handled that chat and like that is such a circle moment like if you clip that clip out of context and you put it like that could go viral just like mm -hmm. as as a quintessential like gen z like uh like current era social media kind of thing of like i'm in tears because i didn't handle my group chat very well i didn't perform to my optimal ability in the group chat uh it's, it was so funny to me and like he is just so earnest in his like in everything he does in such a silly, goofy environment, I, I, I think it's, I, I, I find him very entertaining. If I had a nickel every time a Brandon in reality TV struggled in an opening challenge, I'd have two <laughs> nickels. I don't know if it comes with the name, but yeah, I, I mean, I got really worried for him for a second because to your point, Taryn, we almost always get this person who comes on, tries to catfish and gets in way over their head. It gets sussed out, gets eliminated immediately. And that happens here where, you know, he's trying to be himself, but in this very different persona. And as a result, he ends up shooting for the middle of the road. And you have these three big personalities around him that are like, go girl, give us nothing. And so I love that, like, okay, we're already breaking down in the circle. This means that there are capacities for histrionics, which we love in our reality TV contestants. But then he also, like Miles, has this sort of meteoric rise where within, what, an episode Olivia is the top influencer, which I'm still confused it's, about. Well, to me, that's that's just classic circle where it's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> regardless of how obvious you are as a catfish, the catfish, I, I you know, I, I don't have the stats like Max might, but I feel like a catfish has almost always been an influencer in the first round. Like it's 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 ve I feels very common to me. And I think it's because on first impression, uh, they don't give anybody a reason to rate them low. And I think that's what happened with Olivia, which is that like a lot of other people, they had their people who rated them num number one, and they had their enemies who rated them at the bottom. Whereas Olivia had everyone rate her roughly like somewhere middle, maybe. Top yeah. Level, and that was enough to put her in the first place. I yeah. Think. I think it was the perfect storm of the right people caught sevens from the right people and caught ones from the right people, which mm -hmm. gave Olivia the opportunity. I do love the way they edited this, though, because I truly was floored that not only was Olivia an influencer, but number one on the list. <laughs> number one on the list. Um, I initially, with Brandon, I was not loving it. When Brandon was not high on Olivia, neither was I. I was like, oh, come on. Because, you know, we see this happen where someone will choose a catfish persona but they have a lot of personality that you're seeing from your POV, but they're not putting it on the screen or sorry, on the, well, their screen. Yeah. But by the end, I feel like Olivia started finding her own and I'm, and I've been enjoying Brandon's antics, um, especially with Frank, the, the hot dog uh, plushie yes. thing that is also there with him on his journey. That's a, that's my thing. I think Brandon is one of the best like responders to stuff. And also considering he seems to be the only person that's on to Max, uh, which I think is very interesting and maybe speaks to Brandon being like surprisingly astute for the game, despite feeling socially a step behind.
And and I I loved that uh, that Brandon felt, uh, or should I say Olivia? I I usually refer to them as their catfish name. Uh, I yeah. love that Olivia felt not only comfortable, but like they they wanted to actively go out of their way to uh, like defend Steffi. Um, to be like, I know everyone else is saying this other thing, but like I'm gonna stand up for the person that I've made a connection to and that for what I think is right. Um, because like that's not like the most common thing in the world. Like you don't usually want to put yourself in that same bucket when everyone else is against that person. Um, but I love, I, I think both strategically and just like as a person, I think it speaks well to, uh, to, to Olivia's game, uh, and, 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 you know, persona that, uh, that she was willing to do that. I'm curious how long the time is between when they start and when we get to the heels of this first blocking that's going to happen. Because if it's the same amount of time as any other season, they've spent a lot of time together. And I 100% think that Olivia is doing the right moves of trying to defend the pieces she thinks she has. Because with the groups having this much time, if I'm bonding with someone, that means other people are bonding with other people. And I got to keep the ones that are close to me because everyone's getting close and I need my people. Right. If you're trying to take it as like a sun up, sun down in the show, it seems like it's only been like a few days. But to your point, Puya, from what we hear, there was so much downtime in the circle of the show proper that I would imagine there's been some more conversations that also maybe might have led to Olivia being in this top spot. You know, maybe she was chatting a bit more with people like Cassie and others that when they rate her high being like, oh, she feels so real. It doesn't feel like too much of a shift from those first four who had some very bad vibes about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll say again, I really liked that we didn't get a blocking immediately with that first vote. Like, we still had the first impressions vote, which was fun. It's usually not indicative of how future votes will go. And so the the blocking, I think, is usually kind of an anomaly. Um, <clears throat> and I think we probably would have seen Miles blocked in that spot. Uh, and I think that would have been a shame because I think that Miles has been very fun since then. Um, and so like to still get that vote and to have give them some amount of power and influence while also being able to keep the, you know, the people that were watching in place and the, those dynamics in place so that we can really get to know them before by the time, because you know, like if Miles had been blocked there, I wouldn't really, I mean, I, I was like, oh, I liked his answer to those questions. Oh, but he got blocked early, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now like no matter who gets blocked, I'm like, oh man, like I actually care after four episodes. Um, and so I think, again, I think that was just like the right call. Um, even though like, I do want to rant against the, this, this, I, I mean the right call up until you cliffhanger after four episodes. Like, I do not understand the thought process here. Uh, not a single person is left yet. We no. need, we need this. Like yeah. you can't just, you can't cliffhanger this and have us wait a week where it's, it's, we're not going to care. Like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start watching and, the next episode, and I'm gonna be like, "Oh right, I forgot. Oh, and it's this person. Okay, that's that's the thing is that despite it being at the beginning of the episode, it feels like an afterthought in terms of the story. Yes, yeah, and, and in addition to that, I feel like when you get all the way to the end of episode four, it's very clear to me that there is a short list of two people. They can keep trying to throw Kyle in there as a possibility. I'm not budging. I think it's between Paul and it's between Steffi. So there's not exactly a lot of, oh my God, it could be anybody. So it brings that excitement down a level as well. And, and like, I, I get it, right? With binge watching, having these cliffhangers at the ends of episodes, in order to get the person to click the button to watch mm -hmm. next, like, I get it. Uh, it's not always my favorite thing in terms of just like you know crafting an individual episode but i get it and it's fine because i can just click the next button uh but when it's the end of a block of episodes and and, and it's not like they were surprised oh wait it's four episodes at a time this season after five previous seasons of doing it this exact way like they knew this was the end of this block why would you do it this way nobody who is watching it this week at least is going to be able to click the next button and I, there's no shot, I believe, that next week people are going to be like, well, I have to see who got blocked last week when I watched it. Uh, here we go. Uh, they're just going to remember, oh, right, I, I watched that last week. Like, that's what happens to me when I watch. I was watching Physical 100. Great show. Love it. Very fun. Um, 
And every time it came on, I would click on it and be like, where was I? I don't even remember. I just remember that I liked the show. Um, and you know what? When I get through a block of four and they cliffhanger me at the end of it, I don't feel like I like the show. I feel like I'm less likely to watch it in the future. So I, I think this was just a, a wild call. I think that you, they should absolutely have just included the blocking and then and then end it there. Um, yeah. Especially because like the, the question then isn't which one of these options have you that you've already been thinking about for a long time are going to be chosen. The question then is like, how are people going to react when they find out what the blocking was? And right. How are things going to move forward from there? That's, and that's, that's a lot more like provoking for a new batch of episodes to me. Exactly. It feels like more of the completion of like an actual arc, yeah. right? Because I do think we have the AI arc. It's very similar to me when we had the safety chain game and we did like the antivirus thing where like Alyssa had this surprise blocking. It was the exact same situation as Puyo was describing. There it was much, much more literal of you are picking between two people and they gave us a full week to sit on it. There's also just a little bit of like the hurry up and slow down mechanic that comes with dropping batches of episodes at a time of like, Netflix is basically saying, okay, you want to binge your way through these four episodes, but slow down. Now you have to stop right now. Green light, green light, green light, red light. Wait an entire week. It just really has always halted the momentum of the season for me. Listen, this is not the only Netflix reality show to do, to do it, but I do feel like from a competitive aspect, the circle is a little bit different in its storytelling from that capacity, especially when it comes down to this, where this has been the narrative for two entire episodes. And now... Again, like if to your point, Taryn, shit or get off the pot. If if you're not gonna do an elimination, like then try to resolve it on something else. You know, resolve it on Miles spiking his jacket, being like, Paul, I just don't know what to think about you anymore. And then there's more havoc as to what's going to happen. Don't literally build us to the precipice, to the edge of the pool, and then say pool's closed. You can't dive in until next week. Yeah, I fully think if we had had one blocking before this cliffhanger, I would have been fine. It's just the fact that it felt like we kept building, 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 and then you stopped me. I recognize that your show is called The Circle. I recognize that balls are circular, and they can be blue, and you're giving me that, and I don't appreciate it, okay? Give <laughs> me the payoff. You really, All right, we have to go back to really Brandon. Really far for that one. <laughs> well, I, I know, saying, listen, I'm, I'm of, no AI. I'm not perfect, okay? I'm not mad. Speaking of that, going back to the Brandon love, I do love that the very first thing he said on his first reality show is like, oh, I guess I can't touch myself. <laughs> i forgot about that yeah that was in the in the opening vt <laughs> yeah uh was that the only one that felt like i was getting a headache from watching the opening of the episode one though <laughs> like what just with all like the flashing back and so forth much to people? flashing and movement and bright colors and it just it was so and it was loud and it was just well, overwhelming like we, I, we got a new space old. we got a new state we gotta show off the new dicks taryn it was just <laughs> it was just too frenetic for me i was i just couldn't handle it um but let's talk about let's talk about the the two people who seem to be uh most on the cho chopping block here for uh for the blocking the first of which is uh paul uh aka caress um who uh i mean such an interesting <laughs> character i love caress so much because caress is my favorite type of player in the circle which is loud and wrong <laughs> like to watch Caress react so wholeheartedly to each and everything that's being thrown in her direction and digging in so hard. And that's what I love about this as well is again, shades of like Tara Alicia and Savannah that Paul and Steffi just go at each other immediately. There is no tact between these two people, which again might have been why people are saying, well, there's no humanity there, clearly, if they're not showing any sort of filter when it comes to it. But just having Caress react so indignantly to everything that is thrown her way was a consistently enjoyable reaction to me through four episodes. Yeah, Caress's gameplay, or Paul, should I say, to me is very much I am the hero of the narrative and I am not factoring in anyone else's actions, but my whatever I see that matters to me. The whole, I gotta lock down these bros and we gotta bro down no matter what, not really factoring in other people's connections to then... When Kyle is questioning uh, Paul of like, hey, uh, Venice Beach or Manhattan? And he's like, why are you talking about beaches? We're broing down. Reassure me. It's so hilarious to me. And I low-key think that um, Paul was very close to not being in danger because the AI distraction helped a lot. But then obviously some of the things that Paul uh, Caress has done now has put uh, Paul in the line of fire. What's hilarious about Paul is that 
the catfish profile of Paul. Yes. There's mention that obviously Paul has a lot of followers, about 300,000 on TikTok. Paul has a song that's gone super viral on social media. It, it hit number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 yeah. last wow. year. Yeah, Lil Boo thing. And I didn't recognize him at all, um, which I think is what everyone else is thinking. But if you told them this is the song, I bet you a lot of people in that uh, apartment will know about it. Which is, yeah, which is wild to me because, again, and I understand maybe this is a little bit, well, first of all, maybe we kind of missed out on having Caress on claim to fame because, like, I don't know if uh, if Paul Russell is really that high up there, but, again, she is reality TV gold. But I feel like if you are saying, oh, I am this, like, again, celebrities in freaking quotations, especially nowadays with social media, but, like, oh, yeah. there's a non-zero chance that there was somebody on there who, to your point, Puya, like, might have put two and two together, might have been, like, you know, a follower of Paul Russell and be like, oh my God, wait a minute, is that Paul Russell? Would Paul Russell play the circle? I'm pretty sure this is a catfish, which again, might be another reason why, uh, you know, Paul's profile pictures are like all Getty image photos of Paul at shows. That too, like use, listen, we've talked about this, use a selfie way more often than you should use a, this was taken on a like Sony MX7. No, did yeah. none of that. No. Yeah. I mean, what's what's interesting to me about Paul is just like how much of this seems self-inflicted. Like, yeah. like typically how this game works is that you have an early conversation with somebody and you bond with them. And then that usually like lasts for a while until maybe something like screws it up. And so, you know, that's kind of what happened with Lauren and uh, and Kyle, who we'll talk about soon. But I uh, but then like Lauren gets the message from Paul and you're like, oh, well, Paul's going to get in with Lauren, too except their conversation makes them enemies. <laughs> like, like they have an early bonding conversation that somehow made them enemies and like mortal enemies. Like they never speak again. Uh, they're like, Lauren like will continue to target Paul for like the rest of the four episodes. And it's like, how did you mess up a, an initial conversation this badly? Um, and then on top of that, Paul is like randomly picking fights with Miles after the bro code thing. <laughs> Just like the snipe of Miles of like, hey, how's your girlfriend going to feel about you? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Like, where did that come from? Unprompted. I mean, I love it, though, that so many people in this cast between like what, you know, QT does to Kyle and that people are like, mm. oh, I'm joking. You don't get it. It's like how many times in our lives have people wildly misinterpreted things through text? Like this is the entire point of the circle. And you've known this man for like three days. And you're coming in being like, you two-timing slut. What do you think you're doing, Miles? By the way, I hope you don't remove me from the game. What's so fun about the Paul thing as well is, again, how it ends up falling where Paul is last in the ratings because, again, just doesn't really vibe with people. But then the battle rap happens and people are like, oh, Paul's got to be who he says he is because, like, he's a rapper and that was, like, a pretty fire line of, of you know, uh, a stanza. And then the AI thing comes in and Lauren's like, wait a minute, AI can white rap too. Maybe AI is also a good rapper, and it doesn't help that Caress insists on being on this one-track mind where no matter what the conversation is, it's like, hey, Paul, uh, what color is the sky today? Like, well, it's looking blue, much like the face that's going to be on Steffi after we eliminate her. Let's talk about that, shall we? Like, it's always <laughs> going back to your point, Puya, to Steffi, that the Miles is going to say, okay, but you don't provide reasons. You're just giving your catchphrase, which is get Steffi out without any additional details. Yeah, can we talk about this the the rap game that they had? Because <laughs> here's my thing with rapping, right? They are not raps. That's lyrics. Yeah. It doesn't become a rap until you verbally hear someone's just, flow, cadence, style. So you're, you're writing it, a poem. That's yeah, what you're doing. You're just making it rhyme at the end. Anyone can do that. The problem is that like like nobody like nobody would do a like make a song challenge. You know what I mean? Like mm. make a conventional song challenge because people recognize that if you're not talented at making songs, it's going to be terrible and nobody should be trying it. Right. But for some reason, everyone thinks that that they can rap and everyone thinks that other people should be able to just easily You're rap. You're trash at ra rapping. Put down the mic, <laughs> and maybe bro. It's, maybe it's because like bad raps are funny, at least, mm. or, like funnier than bad songs would be. But like, 
I think there's way too much overconfidence in the world of uh, of amateur rap creation. Oh, yeah. It's an annual ick for me when someone in the Big Brother house decides, I'm going to rap. And then everyone's like, do it on the eviction night. And then I got to ah! sit there with my hand between my face. Like, it's it can be a lot. You, but- mean, you, you weren't a fan of Mike Boogie's beats? Please. I, think, I, think I, that's the I wasn't biggest a fan thing. of many things. I was going to say, I think that's the biggest thing that Puya's a fan of with Mike Boogie in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be the only thing, yeah. It, so to me, it was fun because what, when, you know, speaking about obviously, I think if you think you're really good and you're not, that's very icky. But when in doubt, diss track. When in doubt, write roasts. And some of these people decided... I'm going to sideswipe a little bit, which was that was the funny thing to me with uh, I think it was QT and Miles. She calls him Water Gun Kelly, essentially saying your Dollar Tree Machine Gun Kelly. And he was like, that was good. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then he was like, what, what you say? And I was like, I'm sorry. She called you Water Gun Kelly. I mean, that's a little bit well, of confirmation I, bias. Though, right? bio, like, like I'm a I'm a like dollar store. Uh, uh, did he already say that? Yeah, All right. Well, I was going to say, because otherwise, like, it's also a little bit of like. But she noticed me, you know, she, <laughs> she's paying attention. She to knocked me. me down, but only people who really think about you would do that. I will say, I think my favorite relationship through these first four episodes, though, is Paul and Kyle, because it's like Millhouse yes. and Bart Simpson, where yeah. Paul's like, hey, Kyle, it's you and me, right? And Kyle's like, what now? You're a headache for me. Every single conversation. And it just brought me to tears with how funny kyle's incredulous reactions are to paul every single time yeah i i love it i love i love that relationship i loved the the beach questioning interrogation <laughs> mm-hmm. if this uh, dude's a dude he's not going to manhattan beach <laughs> right? like yeah, kyle's so- Kyle's paranoia over the AI is, is amazing. Oh, I love he's it. giving me the best reactions. And that's kept Kyle high on the list for me because I really was high on him from the beginning. And then yeah. his gameplay kind of brought me a little lower. Um, you've both been to LA, I presume. Mm-hmm. Okay, can you speak? To, can you explain? Because I've heard of Venice Beach. Yeah. Why is Manhattan Beach so like no single man would ever go there? Is it like a couple's beach? Like, what is this? I couldn't even tell. I said, Taryn, you have home field advantage right now. I'm talking about the East Coast. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't go to LA frequent enough to be like a beach goer in LA. I mean, I Fair. live in San Diego, so it's like, makes a lot more sense. You got sense. beach at home. You're right. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not, I would not be uh, knowledgeable enough to tell you about Manhattan Beach. I, why, I, why you feel that way. For me, I was like, based off the nature of the fact that I haven't heard of Manhattan Beach, because when he said Manhattan, I thought, that's a weird thing to say. Would you rather Venice Beach or New York? Like, I don't understand why you would say that, but I, it has to be like a like where like older people go. Probably yeah, and I something. think from what I'm reading up on the Google, and so maybe I'm no different than Max after all, but <laughs> it seems like Manhattan Beach is mainly known for like where rich older people tend to go. By older, it's like 35 plus. The, like, the about oh. says it's a laid back uh, community pop uh popular families and outdoor enthusiasts okay so yeah. less about all the other stuff going on more yeah, like, like a you, family wanna... beach whereas venice beach is a bit more like yeah if you want like a party. hoochie mm. mama you go to venice beach <laughs> <laughs> yeah none of that in manhattan beach apparently but how about you been both and just go on a hike because that is the answer that we got from from paul here <laughs> And also being like, and I'll see you there, bro, on the mountain, right, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, he also he said hiking like the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, <laughs> which is just like it makes you makes it feel like you don't even know LA. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, like, like you could, but like the fact that like you're like LA, well, Hollywood. <laughs> I feel like, like okay. when you're well, being asked the question on the circle, and it's A or B, never go with C. You're only going to make it like potentially catch yourself in a bad spot. Well, that's the tough thing as well, is that Caress is from Dallas. And I don't know if she currently resides there, but that's, I think, another unfortunate sort of externality of, okay, if you're trying to be your like billboard charting brother, you got to know some stuff about California geography. You got to write it down in that book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My other favorite thing about Kyle is his dog. Um, Deuce. Deuce. I have fun in every single shot that Kyle's in of finding his dog and like looking at what kind of scrunched cute face he's making. It's so fun watching Kyle try and like, you know, watch the screen or like hear an alert out and then still see in the corner. He's like, all right, do see, get back here, go back over there. Um, Very fun. Immediately takes a dump in the house within like seconds of being there. 
And um, is Which this is, only by the, the way, again, a new set in a bread. They move stateside. They're no longer in the UK. It's like, mm-hmm. welcome, Circle. Here's a dog to Got shit all over it. the carpets. Got a Chris in it. Is this the second time we've had a pet after uh, Tim had cats, right? Or cat? Um, I feel like it might be or is it even third? more. Trying, I, I feel like someone may have brought an animal. Yeah, I, I, I can't. It's hard to tell because like I might be thinking of the UK version. Um, yeah, but, like I uh, mean, there was someone, of course, who brought her baby. <laughs> I I so here's my pick because I know they're like uh, oh it's it's the circle all singles edition. Here's what I want. I want the circle all pets edition. I Everybody has more. a pet. Yeah, the, the Taryn, Taryn, this is what you and I spoke about previously, that, like, Catfish has a dog, you know? Just be like, arf, arf, it's me, bingo! <laughs> <laughs> like, people... I want all at- pet owners, and then in the, the, the how you catfish is that you don't actually own a pet. Ooh. Oh. So everybody has to include their pet in the prof- in the photo with them. Well, um, yeah. Max so, does say dogs in your profile picture increases your likability 38%. Exactly. And so and so the catfish that season are people who ha- who are faking that they own a pet. Uh and and they have to they have to like answer questions about their fake dog and like the how often do you go on walks with your dog? Uh and that's that's the thing. Well, then the question is, are you going to get like all dog alliances versus all cat alliances? Yes, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. all, listen. I I tell the idea. Happen. And then you cast one vet in the house to be like, oh, I got to break down everything that's happening. All right, Omer, this is your opportunity to get back on TV. <laughs> oh, Omer would be absolute bananas on this show. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. So Kyle, I'll admit initially, yeah, I, I was sort of like, okay, here we are, you know, professional athlete, comes in with the six pack, is pretending to be single. Okay. We've sort of seen this song and dance before, but two can't things. Can't keep his shirt on. Can't keep his shirt on, mm-hmm. though apparently his abs are fake, according to some people. Two things, though, really kept me interested in Kyle as these episodes went wrong. Again, first is him sort of being the straight man to Paul, just continually disapproving of this man who wants to be his best friend more than anything in the world. And the second is the thing that does get Kyle in the names in the in the mouth of a couple of people, which is like, OK, the most alive day of my life. Here's me on a dune buggy. Shit, my wedding rings in this photo. And I, for some reason, said that I was wasn't married. Let me pick this photo where I am in the far left corner, like a Where's Waldo painting, where you have to spot me. And everyone's like, why is the day you were most yeah. alive where the camera was away from you 30 feet? To Question. be fair, his, his like four-wheeler photo also looked AI generated. So yeah. It's like... yeah, it wouldn't help either way. Okay, so my initial thought was, if you're going to go in a single, I think you can just get, you know, put like a couple hours in or pay somebody, get the, all the photos Photoshop with the ring off. Alternatively... What if he just flipped the photo 180? You know? Whoa, oh, whoa. like it's on his right hand instead of yeah. his left hand? What about that? This is a quick fix. I think then you're paying attention to like, okay, what's the text written on the dune buggy? Is it backwards? Is it forwards? Oof. Yeah, never mind. That really fell apart really quickly. Uh, but no, the photo was way too far back. Enough so that it does look like you're trying to hide something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, how about the other person who seems to be on the chopping block here? Uh, Steffi, who, um, I mean, uh, do we need, can we just call her Kendra from Survivor 45 2.0? Dude, four episodes and immediately that's what I thought. And there were still moments where I thought more and more that is, this is Kendra for 45. Yes. Yeah. A, a psychic, uh, horoscope reader. Kendra also offers a service that reads yes. horoscopes as well. Has that sort of like vivacious energy. I felt so bad for her because listen, she's certainly bringing it on herself or like she is Jekyll and Hyde of like namaste everybody to like F you Paul uh, in the course <laughs> of like an episode. But if, if spotting an AI is determined by like people using random words that you don't understand guys, am I AI? Is this my own moment where am I programmed? Is this just going to be circuitry and wires underneath this? I felt so seen in Steffi's plight here. Yeah, but that's the funny thing with Steffi, because I think there's some stuff she did that 100% is her own fault why she's being looked at. But then some stuff it isn't. And I think the number one thing that Steffi didn't do anything wrong is she's multifaceted. You know, she has the astrology stuff. She has yoga, but then she's roller skating. And like, yeah, a person can do many a thing. Let's not I, act like you can't. Michelle called them out on that, right? When they're like, I don't understand. She's this astrology person, but then she's roller skating and battle rapping. And Michelle's like, yeah, it's almost like people who can roller skate can also do astrology. Right. So that part, I was very much like, I, I can't blame you. What I think can be blamed on her a little bit is the, 
oh, you're a Capricorn? Well, you're, you know, your moon has been in retrograde for the last seven months. Like, it was so quickly responsive that they do end up using it as this could have been AI generated. It was a little too much. I feel like if you hear what sign they are, you go like, we're going to vibe really well together. And you move on. Yeah. I think that's the move. I, I think that, like, I, I think that people are very used to getting horoscopes from the internet. Um, right. And like, yeah. even if you have a friend who's really into them, they would probably like Google the exact like forecast for you. Like you tell them and then they'd be like, oh, let me look it up. This is what your forecast is. And so the fact that she's rattling it off, I think really speaks to it, it like triggers that that similarity that you have in your head of like, this feels like I'm talking to the Internet. Uh, right yeah now. right that and that's the thing is that there's a difference between the internet and ai because that's the thing that gets stephanie in right. trouble is people say oh it's too volatile it's either this or that when really if you're spawning ai you are going for like okay who is giving the most mid non-committal generic responses to things it's less so about okay there's a glitch in the system and this person's showing too many signs of volatility if anything that's proving that they're human because they have all these wild personality shifts but then again maybe they're not assuming that like this cast is as wild as it is where everyone just seems totally unhinged well i mean i think i think that the trick there is that like uh it, it really depends on how you've trained the ai because you know uh there was that period of time where you know chat gpt was kind of going wild right like it was hallucinating mm -hmm. and it was starting to do all kinds of weird stuff uh so like you never really know is the problem um but certainly i think that uh if you're looking at like do they know more than they should? It's like, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything. Like, uh, chat GPT for a long time, like, wasn't even connected to, like, current information. It's not necessarily, like, an information gathering uh, resource, um, or at least wasn't for a while. Uh, it's certainly not something that you can use very accurately. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that in that sense it was off, but I think that it was that, it plus the inconsistency or seeming inconsistency of, the namaste kind of personality with her being the first person to cast stones in that glass house uh right. was for, like for no, Whoa. for no reason i was looking back through my notes like okay did paul take a shot at steffi or something but no steffi just kind of comes unencumbered into that battle rap being like hey paul you led me on red you son of a bitch which i guess is alluding to something we didn't see yeah maybe yeah um so we'll see i mean she certainly made her allies who did try to like stick up for her but um you know it's uh she she's her and paul are, are down there in in some trouble here also um, she has an emotional support skeleton yeah like i i love I these that, things i mean that's i've talked about this before like when i do in interviews with reality tv contestants these are the ones honestly that i vibe with the most are like the free spirit types uh and Getting to see Steffi talk with Herbert, the emotional support skeleton, to, to having her say that her dead aunt was guiding her, uh, very much like Grandpa Lou, the bird on the windowsill, to her doing the egg cleanse, which I need to find out more about, because, like, she screamed when she cracked the egg, which indicated to me some sort of omen, but, like, I don't know what that means. I didn't take a look at the yolk to see what that meant, but the fact that this woman was rubbing poultry on her body to try to, like, get out the spirits. That's what I love in a reality TV character. Well, this is my problem with, like, shows that don't have live feeds, uh, meaning every show other than Big Brother, uh, which is that, like, I, like, how much of this was put on for the show? You know what I mean? Like, how much of this is... I'm sure I'm sure that she is, like, this person. Like, I, I'm 100%. But, like, does she go around her house with an emotional support skeleton? I don't know. Maybe she does. but. She could also not, and it might be something that, like, is part of the persona, right, uh, of, like, being on the show and, like, having, like, uh, a thing to do, which is also fine, but, like, uh, you know, it's, like, I, I want to know, like, how much of this is stuff that she, like, actually does regularly and, the way, like, is this the way that she would actually, uh, like, be interacting with, uh, with herself and with, you know, other people? Um, it's, but, and, and if we had live feeds, we would know, like, oh, this, this, is, mm. this is her. Uh, you know what I mean? Like this is just this is just Steffi. Um, mm. but but I but with reality TV, you always kind of have to wonder. Uh, so yeah, that's my only issue with it. I <laughs> mean, I just love the ferocity that Steffi comes at Paul. Even going to like the most recent one with the day you felt most alive, and Steffi was the one to go first. Where Paul again puts out this 
getting image of him at a concert and Steffi's like, wow, I was going to make you a peace offering, but <laughs> you're fake AF. Screw you, Paul. And they're like, Puzzle, like, where did this come from? Like, I know we've been beefing low key, but why did you decide to basically offer the olive branch and then break it over your knee by saying I could have done this, but because of the photo I posted, I'm not. She can't help herself. She knows she she's got the, she knows psychically that he's that he's a catfish. Um, yeah, I did love that as well, right? That she's like, well, I can't say that I'm suspicious of Paul because I had a psychic reading of it. It's like that's your line. That's the limit for you. That's like that's what you should have said. There's no shot he would have thought you were AI if you said that. <laughs> um, let's talk about Lauren because Lauren, uh, I thought was very fun as well, uh, especially like. Her whole dilemma of, like, I feel so strongly that it's Paul, but everyone else is saying that it's Steffi, but I don't think it's Steffi. But am, is, am I the one that is wrong, or are they the ones that are wrong? And everyone's wrong, turns out. But, like, it, I, I thought it was fun to watch this dilemma because it is such a classic thing to happen in a social strategy game and in real life where you have your own personal conviction about what you think is right, Everyone around you is saying that's wrong. This is what it is. Uh, and they've, they've even had studies about this where like uh, like people will even even like when they see something in front of them that is very clearly one thing. If everyone else around them is saying that something else, they'll be like, yeah, it's it's something else. Uh, and and so watching her through these four episodes, I thought was was fun as she just like was freaking out about this, just could, like could not figure out where she wanted to, to land. Does Netflix have the market cornered on female gamers? Like we had Avery on the oh, mole. Yeah. We had Lauren, I guess, former Twitch streamer, which I guess yeah, maybe you can Twitch streamer. You used she to put be one X of us. Twitch streamer, which I thought was very weird. Same. I was like, why? What? Just say Twitch streamer. Like a stigma. Like, I, I assume know. she's stopped Twitch streaming. But well, if I that's looked the case, it up, and oh, okay. she doesn't link her Twitch account on her like link tree thing. So she so might have she, moved yeah, on. Might have been she's bad a, blood. She's a former Twitch streamer, I guess. But like, but that, but what are you now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like between that, I think there was like someone in season three who was also like a big cosplayer. Like people are always asking, where are the female nerds out there? And I feel like they're existing on these Netflix reality shows for whatever reason. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I. I thought that was. That was, she was like, I used to, I used to stream games on Twitch. She was like, uh, like, okay, <laughs> what do you do? Now? Yeah, she's. Uh, I so I found the Twitch link. It is uh, not there. It's not even like a page that is there. It's just disconnected. So she's really an ex Twitch streamer. Maybe this will be. Listen, we haven't gotten any of like these sob stories from the Circle contestants, right? When they're like, oh, I really liked when I painted that picture of a horse. It reminds me of losing my father at the Kentucky Derby three years ago. Like, maybe it'll be, maybe we'll find out from Lauren, like, what led to that vendetta against Twitch. But I, I really like Lauren. I think Lauren, listen, there's a reason why she was also one of the top two influencers. Like, I think she's, she goes along to get along when she seems really personable. Everyone seems to like her. I think you can lock her in for the finale. I don't know if we could say she's winning because the finale is such a weird thing, but like, she doesn't appear threatening to anybody. Even, when she is able to just like piggyback off of what Olivia is saying, it never feels like Lauren is the one to necessarily spearhead anything, but it's certainly someone that to your point, Taryn finds herself in a good position of power to like get so much information and dissect it from there on out. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I looked it up. Her last Twitch stream was the 26th of December, 2023. That's relatively recent. Well Okay, I, so I, I thought I heard something in this uh, in one of these episodes. I thought I heard them talk about, like, the eclipse being in a few Yeah, months. so that was the big line from Steffi, right? It was like, well, the upcoming eclipse next month will time your sign. And everyone's like, what the hell does that mean? Uh, so, but I don't think they were referring to that eclipse. Like, I'm, well, actually, no, it wouldn't have filmed last month. I'm pretty it, sure it filmed this past fall, if I'm remembering correctly. There was another eclipse potentially maybe oh, i'm sure there was yeah right yeah there's like eclipses all the time okay <laughs> there's a big eclipse upcoming but there was that that different <laughs> eclipse that was doing something else yeah it's like earthquakes um, right like there's the big one and then there's like oh yeah all these little ones happen you know every other day or so yeah i guess so uh so yes uh lauren i thought it was fun um we have qt 
uh, who is uh, she's got a little a little thing going with Miles. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, uh, like the thing that really stood out immediately to me was that she came in. She was like, I'm a huge fan of the show. Like, uh, like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play. She seems very strategic um, and like has like a good personality for it where she uh, she like has personality. She's not just like a, a gamer, but mm. that personality is guided by like strategic thinking. And you could see that when she's talking to Miles about like, I really think you should do Steffi. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of promise there with uh, with QT. Um, I just like I worry that as an addition to the cast, somebody that came in with the AI, like, does that make her more or less trustworthy when they find out Max is the AI? Right. You know I mean? mm-hmm. If Max goes first, I will worry for her 1000%. Yeah, but I do think she is incredibly capable to do well here because yes. it is this sort of like label that we get with like almost a Haley from Big Brother 20 of like, here is this, you know, young, attractive woman. She's a former Lakers dancer. I don't think anyone would necessarily assume, to be quite honest, oh, yeah, I've watched every season and episode of The Circle multiple times. I've studied the game. I'm ready to come in and do this. And, like, that is deadly. And it's not to say that she's necessarily coming in and brokering all these deals, but I think she's one of these people that's able to apply her knowledge and have a good read of things, even though, again, she is the one that is putting forward, oh, we got to get rid of Steffi, even though she is not the AI. I think the way that she was, like, receiving the girls alliance and is basically saying like i'm not gonna commit to them fully because for Mm -hmm. all i know there may not be gendered stuff and i might just like exclude myself then from a bunch of the guys and now that we're kind of getting set up at least on the surface this kind of gendered war with uh you know the the almost romeo and juliet of cutie and miles in the middle both being like i don't really want to work with them but i'm sort of on their side could be a really interesting dynamic to look forward to so i think she has some of the most space to play with as well. She's someone else who I think is in good with pretty much everybody. And I think she was even able to like paper over the one awkward reaction she had with Kyle, but basically being like, Oh, I'm sorry. It was a joke. And even Kyle was more so coming from the angle of like, no, 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 I'm sorry. I overreacted to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, I think that, uh, the, the public flirting with miles, it's an interesting choice, right? Because on one hand, I do think it caused some people to be like, oh, and and that's clearly, I think, part of why Paul did come for Miles mm-hmm. later on. Uh, like people feel a little threatened by this connection. Um, on the other hand, like a strong show of uh, connection can be useful, um, especially when it's like, you know, a loose flirting thing. Um, I feel like the the balance is always interesting to me uh, in these games. The circle is no exception of, you know, you want to be seen as somebody who can bring something to the table that has influence, that has power, so that people, uh, so that you can wield that power. But on the other hand, if you if you're seen as having either too much power or just enough power that you can be cut off and that power can be gotten rid of, um, then uh, there's some danger to it. So, like exposing your loyalties is is can be a dangerous play. And we saw Max, the AI, do it. Uh, with Lauren publicly, and we yeah. saw uh, QT do it publicly with, with Miles. And so uh, I'm curious to see how that shapes out. I will say, the thing that made me buy into the AI is actually AI, not just a production person doing stuff, was Max's unrelenting uh, backing of whatever Lauren's doing, just mm-hmm. because Lauren was the influencer. Mm-hmm. It was like, nope, no matter what happens, I got to stick to Lauren, which I don't think is a bad shout because Lauren kind of now has made him the number one on her side but i did find that interesting that uh, you're putting a lot of eggs in the first influencer which is not a bad shout but i mean also you know factors to be fair lauren was the one that brought him into the game which do we suspect no matter what profile lauren picked that was going to be the ai i think for lauren it was max or and i apologies to the fake account that the other one was i think that was always going to be the ai slot I think yes. so. Simon, you- I think. And I, and I also think it's pretty pointed, right? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that QT ended up getting in because I just feel no offense to the other person. Like, I, I want QT in here because she is, is great. And maybe to Brandon's point, a little bit different. But like, are they also like, 
let's put her up against a blonde woman so that they can say we've had too many blondes let's bring in you know someone that looks different <laughs> well if they cared that much they would have just brought QT. you know what i mean um but uh but yeah i think i think um because lauren was second i think it makes sense that they stuck her with the ai pick uh, yeah and, I, and, and i the actual top spot with the with the actual person I do agree, though, you know, uh, Max was pretty brazen doing that. But again, what helps is this cast is so brazen with each other. Like, yes, yes you say that Max dedicated his rap to Lauren. Lauren was the first to go and separately and independently dedicated her rap to Max. Yeah. And then, like you said, these people are just either like lambasting each other or loving the hell out of each other publicly. And it makes for such a fun dynamic. This is something I really like about the cast of 46 as well. Survivor wise is like. These people have no tact and are just open and out about everything. And not only does that encourage other people to be more out and open because other people are doing it, but it also then allows for, you know, some very interesting conversations. It allows for things to react to of like, oh, look at this. Miles and QT openly declared each other. They're like circle besties and number one allies. We got to break that up soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think my most disappointed uh in max was the 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 conversation with miles and paul um where uh, you know i i mean huge huge uh benefit to have miles reach out to you if you're max uh in that moment you get you have an, a chance to establish something with the person who's about to block um and i thought that max was doing well up until the point where they brought in paul and then like i I have appreciated how well the AI does with certain things. But then when it's literally <laughs> like, hey, what's Max got to say? And Max is just like, uh, great talking to you guys. Bye. Bye. And yeah. just leaves. It was just like, what? <laughs> like, come on. Like, it's such a cop out. Like, it wasn't even a response. It, he wasn't even providing a half ass excuse of like, listen, I really can't say my mind's up in the air. He literally said, Max, what do you think? Well, good luck with your decision. Bye. Completely like, unprompted. They trained him on like Homer Simpson gifts of like walking back <laughs> yeah. into the yeah. bush. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Max's whole thing of, okay, if I don't give any opinion or I kind of don't push back or it'll keep me safe because I'm more passive. And, you know, we talked about how Max is probably going to be right in the middle like that. I think in this instance, if I was uh, Kyle... Or sorry, who was in the chat? Was it Paul, oh, Max, and Miles. Miles? If I was Miles, I'd be very irritated with Max. I'd be like, "You're just kind of just dumping the buck on me, and I don't appreciate it." And that's and that's where I felt like like Max had done so well with Lauren because Lauren brought Max in to be like, "What do you think about the AI? Here's what I think." And then I thought it was so solid. Uh, I was very surprised at how good a decision it was for Max to be like, "Well, I see what you're saying, but what about Steffi?" Right. Because that's that's not what a catfish would normally do. That's not what like a lot of people would normally do. They'd normally be like, oh, you've presented me an easy option to just I'll agree with. I'll take what you've given me. I'll right. run with it. I don't have to give an opinion. I don't have to get in trouble. So for the AI to immediately just introduce a a an alternative, I was like, oh, this AI seems to know what it's doing. Um, but then it's, it seemed like after that moment, it was just like, nope, but this is my line. I'm sticking to it. And I'm not making any more waves and I'm not making any more uh, having any more opinions. It was just like uh, like and I'm I'm critiquing an AI strategy right now. Like <laughs> well, but that being said, I mean, let's let's call something out here because again, something like the Spice Girls was seen as a one time gimmick. They were not gonna be there for the entire season to the point where they were actually like given a game to say, guess who the Spice Girls are. Do we think Max is actually going to last this season? I think there is a very, very good chance that once one of Steffi or Paul are booted, then Max is going to unmask himself, for lack of a better term, and be like, I was actually the AI. Oh, ha -ha. Boo, that would suck. I would hate that. Would, that. that would suck. I, I, I think at some point they will do that. I would hope it's not that quickly. Um, yeah. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if we'll make it out of the next batch of episodes with Max. I think that's I, I feel. I feel, because like, I get it. Like, you, I don't know, though. I feel like, because I, I do have that feeling. I, I agree. Because I think the fact that they even said it so early means that they probably don't intend to have Max stay that long. But like, I I really would like to see them just keep Max in until he gets blocked or makes it to the finals, like, which would be very fun. And like, okay, you can say he doesn't get to win, 
Um, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, he, like he's he's the mole, right? Like he does not get a cut of the prize money, no matter yeah, it'd what. It'd be if Max gets to the final, just remove him from the rankings yeah. once everyone exactly. ranks. Easy. Exactly. Yeah. And then and then and then it would be a very fun final table. Uh, See, that's the thing. That's where you could have your cake and eat it too. Is like, yes, unfortunately, we did not get the grand reveal. Like this whole time, you've been playing with an AI and you don't even know it. But we could still get the thing of, okay, you thought you got rid of the AI? Nope, they were here the entire time. How funny would it be though if uh, if they got the person who was who was Max in the photos <gasps> to to show up with like the a like like uh, like with like an a, a physical manifestation of the AI? By the way, that looks like an Xbox, like the new Xbox, doesn't it? Like the uh, yeah, a little AI? bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or a little like bit like a rectangle. humidifier, <laughs> or like like he maybe he comes in and then they're like, oh my god, it's it's actually Max. Uh, and then, uh, and then he like, he's like, well, actually I have something to show you. Uh, and then behind like a curtain, it's like, yeah. this is me. <laughs> That's the thing, yeah, I, I think it should be that this is like a Cyrano de Bergerac that this well-dressed man holding the dog comes in being like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. But let me show you the real Max. And like, he oh. is actually the under butler of Max and pulls open the cloche. <laughs> and there is sitting this rectangular monstrosity. Max doesn't say a word. He comes in. They're like, oh, my God, it's Max. He hugs them. Uh, it doesn't say a word. He walks over to the curtain. He pulls it back. It's a it's an Xbox. He, he, he grabs the Xbox. He holds it. The voice then comes out of the Xbox and speaks for him. And it Ooh. says, hi, I'm Max. Uh, <laughs> how good would that be? Come on. Additionally, I think that when they do, obviously, they do the reveal dinner. I think whoever the second person is that's going to go into the room, they production should just hand them an a the a gadget, and they're like, just hold this out the door before you walk in to spook the person. I feel like that would be fun. At least give it to one person to do that. Yeah, or yeah. or just uh, put it in the corner of the room, and everyone's like, "What the hell is that thing?" Because we don't <laughs> oh, they don't hi, know what you, Max looks yeah, like. <laughs> thanks for joining me. I've been here the whole time. I'm Max. Exactly. Yeah um okay so uh i think we have one person we haven't talked about which is uh cassie mm -hmm. our um, little uh our little southern belle for the time being because i think we still have one more coming our way this season i mean has i think she came in with like one of the best packages right really interesting life got married to her high school sweetheart purposely catfished him to see if he could cheat okay. and then when he did she divorced him i was confused about this because i i was confused did she catch him cheating and then catfished him after? To That's what I thought. Him? Or did she catch him cheating via the catfishing? I thought it was the I, latter. I, I thought it was former. I, I also got the vibe that it was the former, but then I was but I was a little confused. Um, so I, yeah. I feel like we need some clarification on this. I thought it was like he cheated, she had an inkling, she made a catfish account to get him to cheat, essentially, to confirm that suspicion. More so than I'm gonna test him. Oh, he actually went for it. Screw this guy. Oh, see, I thought it was even. I thought she caught him cheating, and then after they had broken up, catfished him. Oh, uh, to be like, to be like, screw you. I catfished you. Oh. No, it, it, it seems like the oh way that God. she vocalized it, which would have been just like sociopathic. But the way that she vocalized it in her package, I think, was that she married her high school sweetheart, then caught him cheating, and then they got divorced. Uh, that would be super vindictive. When did the catfishing happen? <laughs> so the Netflix bio says, this Southern Belle has a history with catfishing as she caught her ex-husband cheating after making a fake profile. Okay, okay. So, so I think it was a manner of, I don't know, she was sniffing around something. Something was sus, and she's like, I'm going to try to pose as somebody else. And then when he took the bait, she's like, got him. I feel like, I feel like there's a rom-com in this where oh, for sure where like they fall back in love mm -hmm. because they fell in love as catfish and <laughs> you know what i mean oh my god <laughs> they're both catfishing others and then they catfish each other well like she's catfishing him and he cheats but only because she was so good at making him fall in love he with fell her fell in love with exactly, her all yeah. over you know what again I mean? it's like 50 first dates oh my god <laughs> Like that, and listen, if I'm him and there's not a lot of uh, pitches he can make, that would be the one to do, right? I'm like, <laughs> no, honey, I just fell in love with you all over again. Doesn't this prove how sterling yeah. your personality and how strong our bond is? I've no, I don't know whose underwear that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's the most interesting thing about her, to be honest. 
It, well, that's the thing. Cassie, I felt like wasn't giving us a lot in the episodes, but she did have a, a funny, like a couple of really funny lines. Um, I mean, I can't remember. One of them just made me crack up because um, like uh, she just like will occasionally have like a comment because she's not like up on text lingo. Well, yeah. AI, she was like, oh, is that the blue people from Avatar? <laughs> right. <laughs> Stuff like, like that. How do you get from Navi to AI? Like, oh, that far. <laughs> I, it's not that far, but I feel like, I don't know, like, how much knowledge do you have to have of, I feel like there's certain, like, iceberg levels of knowledge of Avatar, and knowing the Navi has to be at least one level below. So how much Avatar has she seen to remember the Navi to then affiliate it with AI? I just love the idea that she's like, Wait, so like the blue people are gonna be playing the game? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where she thought that was going. Of like, I mean, I guess she thought Avatar, and so she thought, oh, okay, maybe that's the case of oh, they're playing with an Avatar. Everyone's gonna look blue, like a filter. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But I also, uh, to your point, turn. I did love like her random musings, like when uh, Olivia, I think, is uh flirting with uh Max and like talking about uh the picture of him with the basketball, said, oh, I love your ball. She's like. I love your ball. They all look the same. It's a basketball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I love that she didn't know what a BBL was in the wrapping and then later talked about wanting a giant butt and was like, well, you got, you didn't know what it was. It was there all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, that's what she's giving to me. And I think that's, you know, probably a large part of why they cast her. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like she's had like a huge part in any of like the main storylines, but uh, I, she's giving some good like color commentary here and there. Yeah, she's I think the one of the most devoted to like the girl squad, right? Like it seems like she has good relationships with Olivia. I think she called her like her number one ally at a certain point. And then she had this blonde connection with Miles, with Miles. in the beginning, but like nothing has come of that since. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to come back. She did have, like, when, when he was flirting with QT, she'd have the comment of, like, oh, I thought we were, like, blondies <laughs> together. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's going to come back around at any point. But, um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, it, she, she's fun enough. Like, uh, I, I'm not mad that she's there. No, she's a good personality to go to, even if she's not necessarily going to bring, like, the gamesmanship. And who knows? Maybe, like, as inevitably all these threats get taken out, maybe she will kind of emerge. I think... She's someone that you could also maybe lock into at least the final six of making that like penultimate week that's actually a week and not just the finale. Because at this point, I'm just thinking like, who's going to get rid of Cassie? She's not suspected as being a catfish. And she certainly is not threatening enough that people are like, in if they're in an influencer position, they think we got to get rid of her right now. I feel like I might suspect her as a catfish if I were, or not as catfish, as, a, as an AI, uh, if I were in the house. Because like, she's just so like uh I, I just feel like the like oh i don't understand like references mm. thing uh i feel like could be such a put on for an ai that might not get like nuances of human interaction um and so that might make me suspicious of of her uh, but it's hard to say it's hard to say like what i would be suspicious of because i know i know who it is you know yeah that's that's true <laughs> Um, all right. Is there anything else? I, I think one thing that I that I really liked about this set of episodes um, was in the bro code initial conversation. Um, I loved hearing Paul say, I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to go as far as to say, guys, that I'm going to be putting all of you at the top of my rankings, um, because I feel like that's something that they have shied away from explicitly mm. yeah. having in episodes in the past. And I feel like that's such a miss. I think that when you try to like hide things or control how people play or what they talk about, uh, it's just, it doesn't, it's not natural feeling. It's not natural for the players, it's not natural for the viewers. Like, why aren't they talking about the most obvious strategy? Uh, like, it just doesn't make sense. And so to, to, to hear somebody say it was like so, uh, such a relief. It was like a breath of fresh air to be like, okay, thank you. Like, let's, let's organize our rankings so that we can be in power. It's, it makes sense. I like that we're hearing it, especially because it's probably not even going to work out. Like, these guys are a mess. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it was just maybe why they felt comfortable showing it. But, like, more of this, please. Well, on that note, I mean, let's talk about what was hyped up at the end of that super tease in the end of episode one as the most strategic season of The Circle ever. Yep. 
Now, how much of this is the tail wagging the dog? Is it going to be because of this cast that they put together? Is it because of it seems like we're going to have like several other twists brought in of like, seems like maybe a tether twist and like a ride or die situation. Yeah. Or, or, and there's like a sacrificial element to it. Or could this be like, again, perhaps the meta game, the circles maybe running a bit low on like entertainment options. They tried the romance angle, didn't necessarily work. So they're saying, okay, let's really lean into the gamesmanship of it all. I think that it's a combination of the cast. I think it's the framing of like the AI kind of being their focal point is, kept them away because remember last season was touted as the flirtiest season and they really went in with that mindset and when they said though it's going to be the most strategic season part of me thought oh lord i don't know if this is going to go well because i think in its essence the best circle season is strategy and personality and vibes and right now they've got all of it which i'm yeah. very much here for so i really hope not only this energy continues through the second batch of episodes but i hope that this whole ai discussion does put a lot of eyes back on the circle and i hope that the circle producers look at this and think we need to continue casting and formatting the show like this because if they do they're bringing me back into the fold where i was very close to being out of the circle mm -hmm. um some other things i liked i liked the uh, again i i really enjoyed the games for the most part especially the first one with the questions um, but I also really liked uh, toward the end when they had everyone publicly say who they suspected the most. Yes, yeah. um, of AI. Because that was that also was a really fun. interesting exercise. And we always love the queuing as well, right? Of like, okay, because this person said this, that was Max's thing was, okay, people are really saying Steffi. So if I just kind of blend in with everybody, but then you have people come in at the tail end to take advantage of that position to say, yeah, I know you've been thinking about Steffi, but what about this person? And, you know, them also doing things like putting you know, uh, Steffi and Paul right next to each other, knowing that they can directly respond to each other. It was a really fun moment that, again, I think this set of games, to your point, Terry, and whether it's the cast or the games themselves, had people showing their cards more than they ever have in the first four episodes of a season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think more stuff like that, um, you know, I, I think maybe some of the other stuff is was a little more hit and miss, but I think they really got a couple of good hits in here. Um, and, and I really can't praise those opening questions enough because I think they're like, it was such a good way to get to know these people on a much more, much less superficial level than like a, an intro package would. Um, and so, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and, uh, and, and then again, like the, just, you know, cliffhanger stuff was annoying, but. All right. Um, well then let, let's, let's stake our claim right now because it really does seem like it's either going to be Steffi or Paul blocked. Puya, who do you think is going to come in and sort of this this womp womp be getting to the next batch of episodes? It's interesting because I really felt from basically when the twist got introduced, I'm like, all right, goodbye, Paul. I think you're Audi. But I think what the show is doing and showing us different people talking about Steffi to the point where Lauren's like, everyone's saying Steffi. I guess I gotta like pay, potentially look into that. And also, I think the biggest one for me is the one in Miles's ear in. QT is saying, I don't know, I think it's Steffi. I have a feeling that combined with them showing us the emotional side of Steffi, getting kind of these side swipes, I have to imagine it's probably going to be Steffi. I agree. I know that Miles had been entertaining a lot of options, but I do think, you know, when you're one of these first influencers, uh, which he basically is, just he's the super influencer, all right, is the term for the person who has single-handedly the power you want to, much like a first HOH, right? Like, you don't want to catch a big fish, a la Frenchie. You want to make a nomination that will vibe with pretty much everybody, and then you kind of, like, slip back in and say, oh, yeah, you don't need to, if I'm an influencer again, I'm going to do what, quote-unquote, the house wants. And so I do think that even though Olivia and Lauren and obviously Steffi spoke up about how it might be somebody else, I do think that Miles wants to feel, like, relatively well-guarded. I think that Miles also feels if he blocks Steffi, that QT could stick up for him to the girls, as opposed to if he blocks Paul, I don't think, I think he's going to pretty much like sever connections there with someone like Max, maybe even somebody like Kyle, even if he doesn't realize that Kyle wants Paul gone as well. I also think I'll get a little speculative to here. So like tune ahead uh, 30 seconds to a minute. If you don't want to hear any sort of like uh, rumblings from the teaser that played at the end of episode four, 
I'm pretty sure we saw new reactions from Caress. And this one Steffi clip we saw was of her saying something she had already said, which was that Miles was playing five to six steps ahead. So I think just through seeing new versions of this person, there's a lot of footage to choose from. But my metagaming hat has to feel like it's Steffi going here. It, it does see, feel like strategically it, it makes the most sense uh, to Mike's point. Like when the big majority of people uh, are saying Steffi, it feels like you have to go Steffi. My only thing about that is that like, we're talking about Miles, who's the guy who chose like the unpopular answer, like knowingly every time in those question rounds. So I feel like if anybody would be capable of just being like, you know what? I have my own stray thought in this moment. Like, I'm just going to go for it. Like, it, it could be Miles. Uh, it's just, it's. I think it's tough to make that call. And then if you're wrong, like, you look really sus. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, I, I think it could theoretically go either way, but it does it does feel like it's leaning uh, towards Steffi here. Yeah, so um, we'll lose her and we'll get two more people. And then we'll sort of go from there. Another thing that I've been really liking about the circle in the past few seasons is that they have introduced everyone in the cast pretty much within the first half of the season. We're not getting any more of these like episode 10 late arrivals that have no chance of winning the game because nobody's going to vote for that person. So I'm happy that we're kind of getting to know everybody, hopefully in the next couple of episodes, and then we can really start getting rid of people. Yeah, the pacing, I think, was, apart from the cliffhanger, better. Again, getting to know these people, it feels like fewer people total, hopefully. And yeah, if we can get introduced to the new people as quickly as possible, I think that'd be great. Um, is there anything else from these four episodes that we want to touch on? Not that I can think of. I mean, I will say, I know there's going to be a contingent of people that potentially listen to this podcast without watching the show. It's worth the watch this season. I really can't recommend it enough. I think there's a lot of fun moments um, even if you wanted to watch it in a bit of a faster speed, I don't think you lose anything in translation. Watch out. Give it a try. If you're watching it at a faster speed. Oh, my God. <laughs> For yeah. what? So fast. The, the intro, it's fast. Oh, the oh. intro. <laughs> after the VTs, after the intro packages, then, then go one half if you want to. But no, it's been very fun. And I'm very excited to see where we go uh, next week. Yeah, I think, listen, if this is going to be the most strategic season, then I'm gonna. I'm glad we'll have some actual, like, gameplay to talk about that won't be masqueraded. But even if it's not, the personalities, I think, are very fun. It seems like the game designs, you know, we're going to have some twists coming up as well that are really going to force people to show their hands. And, like, these people are showing their hands even when they don't have the games around them. So I really do feel like this is, like, the perfect cast for this type of season. And we're already basically a third of the way through, but... I'm excited. To your point, Taryn, back to what you said in the beginning, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I'm glad as like sort of a reemergence of the circle after over a year in a new location now to really, I think, um, make a statement of like, yeah, we moved on from the UK space. This is a US specific show. I think it's a nice statement that the show is making to say like, yes, we are now wholly American based and we are trying to create some good content for you. Yes. Well, we will be back next week. Me and my circle bros. Uh, to talk through some more circle uh, as we get the new batch of four episodes. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully the, the momentum continues and we have uh, like a, a really good solid season of the circle and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll be back. Circle, circle's back. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's about it. Um, any, anything to, any brief plugs before we wrap up? So we're doing these, we should also say, once a week, right? We're doing yes. these uh, on a weekly basis based on the episodes that are dropping. Yes, once a week, we'll be here talking about four episodes. We'll have a good time. It'll be fun. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's what we got. So thank you for, uh, for joining us here uh, today, tonight, whenever you're listening to this. <laughs> and uh, we will see all of you next time.